This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 523.22, show number 393. So Friday was quite a roller coaster. I think we finished a little in the positive. Believe it or not, it was one of the biggest roller coaster Fridays that I've seen in quite a long time. And the market, believe it, it, it made a new 52 week low. We went down. The S&P 500 tagged a 382 retrace from the 2020 lows, and it's a significant level, and the market rallied up into the end of the day, finishing slightly positive into the green by the closing bell. It was a roller coaster ride, if you've ever seen one. And, um, again, it's just, uh, just these kind of markets are treacherous right now. And if you don't have technicals on your side, you really will be, you know, basically in a canoe going down, the rapids without a paddle, and it's it's very very tough right now in this environment. All right, what are the markets doing today? Well, today we got some real good follow through upside action to start. So we're looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 475 points, the S and P 500 uh, having a pretty good day as well, up about 46 points, and the Nasdaq Composite with a very uh, decent day, up about 70 points. So we're looking at uh, decent markets today. The S&P and the Dow are leading the charge. But the one thing I'm, that caught my eye today is the um, financials. J.P. Morgan is up $6 today, and that's quite a rebound. That stock has been a laggard as of late. They have an investor day going on, and that stock is making a big move. And usually there's nothing wrong when the financials are strong, and they're, they're holding up pretty well today. All right. Well, that's interesting. And, well, what else are we seeing here, uh, Geopolitical events. Biden said U.S. would militarily defend Taiwan, and the <laughs> markets are happy with that, eh? It's, it's really it's, – it's unbelievable. But the markets seem to be rejoicing today. I think that this is just an oversold rally, honestly. Uh, nobody's really trusting the rally at this stage of the game. Uh, traders you know, have to be very, very selective on the long and short side, but – with the, with the comments that Biden made uh, over the weekend um, defending Taiwan, I, I have to say, it, you know, it puts everybody in that stage of the game where they say, wow, this is just going to continue to get worse. But I, like I said, the sentiment is so bearish right now. <clears throat> I think we're getting a bid just off of that. Um, but really, this is, this is uh, frightening when you think about it because there's so many people or so many companies rather that still have manufacturing coming out of China right now. And it hasn't seemed to be uh, any kind of shift over the past year or two, or even when Trump was president, you know, we, we still are, you know, importing so much from China. So I really find this to be, you know, probably not the greatest statement to be said at the moment. Um, as you know, we are starting to see a division between the West and the East. Uh, obviously China and, and, you know, we'll be teaming up with Russia. Perhaps India will as as well as they have the very good ties with Russia. And it could be, you know, eventually an East versus West type uh, conflict. Who knows? But um, I, I don't think those were wise words by Biden over the weekend. Yeah, well, he hasn't uh, he's not a president who's been known for many wise words uh, since this all started here. So I guess we'll see what's going on. Uh, gold seems to be reacting favorably to it, though, huh? Yes, gold is holding up very well today. You have a nice little pop in gold. And um, again, that nice uh, low that we hit just last week at 1785 seemed to have done the trick. Um, so far, that is the level to go against. If we lose that level, though, then there's potentially uh, another leg lower for gold. But right now, it's holding up pretty well. I don't see any real problem out here with gold at the moment. All right. So, so gold's looking good. Where are our cryptocurrencies at? Yeah, crypto is actually getting a bounce today. So we're looking at uh, the crypto world with a pretty decent bounce. Um, looks like Bitcoin is back above that psychological 30,000 level. That was really, um, that's a big level for a lot of, a lot of people um, that are trading Bitcoin right now. And I think 
Um, as long as that level holds, you know, this can live to fight another day. The pattern that's being formed on Bitcoin is still okay right now. It's not a horror show, but when I want, what I do want to remind everybody is that the trend is down in Bitcoin. So you most likely you could get what we call in the business a zigzag rally. That means you moved up off the lows, which occurred in Bitcoin basically around the 12th of May. You put in consolidation, then you make another zigzag move up and you complete the formation. Um, so I think that's a possibility for Bitcoin right now. As long as it stays around this 30,000 level, it still has potential uh, minor upside. All right, well, that's pretty pretty exciting here. Um, I guess uh, cryptos, like you say, live to fight another day, trend is down, but um, it looks like the invincibility case for cryptos has kind of been obliterated in the past uh, decline that took place, not only, you know, basically in every asset class. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And um, a lot of people now, you know, are wondering who really holds crypto? Do we have strong holders in it? Or is it just, you know, a lot of weak hands? And I, I have to think it's the latter, really. Um, you do have some guys out there that are strong holders um, that are talking about projections years and years down the road. But, um, you know, when you go into a bear market in equities, that is the dominant market and money will come out of everywhere when that sells off. And that that really is the bottom line. All right. I guess we'll leave it at that. Make sure you go over to Nick's site in the money dot com and see how he's beaten the averages for decades. The Twitter feeds at ITMS at Nick Santiago zero one and at Kerry Lutz and your emails are welcome Send them to kl at kerrylutz.com. Nick, we'll talk to you on Wednesday. Sounds good.